your life and my life literally every single day as far as the thoughts and feelings that I'm producing, whether those thoughts and feelings are high octave or low octave, literally thoughts and feelings is something that we give birth to, just like how a tree gives birth to fruits, vegetables, and things like that. And so if we're producing vegetables, if we're, if we're producing fruits that are not satisfactory to our intentions and where we intend to go, then we have to ask ourselves very important questions like, what am I paying attention to throughout the day? And paying attention doesn't just play out as externally. What TV program do you pay attention to? Uh, you know, what media do you pay attention to? You know, what do you pay attention to even inside of yourself from day to day, hour to hour, uh, week to week, month to month, year to year? Because all these things have a snowball effect and all these things begin to accumulate and create uh, aspects of ourselves, whether you're actually producing the virtue or principle of just being sloth, being lazy, being a sluggard, or you're producing the virtue or principle of wrath, you're always pissed off at other people, places, and things outside of you. But we have to first uh, examine the self and examine what we pay attention to from day to day, minute to minute. Literally, life can be mundane, but within the word mundane, is an, uh, mundane is an option, okay? Everything we choose in our life is an option. Nobody told us to go get the 6 out of 10 girl. We could have gotten that 10 out of 10 girl from the point of view of the matrix. If we're talking about the matrix uh, metrics of what a female should look like and how you could approach her or whatever. But the point is that there's no such thing as something that uh, we don't settle for. Everything in our life we settle for. I've settled for this clothes. I've settled for this uh, table. I've settled for this laptop. Hey, I, I could have gotten it. A $10,000 laptop, do I need it? No. But, you know, am I going to create a situation or a circumstance if, where if I wanted to have a such thing, it, it wouldn't be a problem. So what I'm basically saying is in my life, I've noticed that I pay attention to things that are mundane, things that um, muddy the waters, things that don't produce a clarity of self, things that are really a distraction, but, uh, you know, I'm just gonna relabel it as something as oh no this this is a stop on the road you know you know I was you know I'm on the road of success every single day, every single minute, every single hour as far as how I think and feel what I pay attention to you know what I pay attention to always produces high levels of thoughts and feelings that bend in on themselves as a as a as a first form of resources what we pay attention to it becomes our body language how we go about life uh you know senses words that come out of our mouth. And so, what you if you don't pay attention to if you pay attention to low quality stuff in your mind, if you're constantly like I'm shit, I'm ugly, I can't do something, my dad told me that I was dumb, things like that, you will actually start to become those things because your brain is only proving to itself what you have set your mind on. And since your brain is already so familiar with that mindset, your brain is like, okay, yeah, shit, he's right. We've been calling ourselves broke, we've been calling ourselves ugly, we've been calling ourselves lazy. All these different labels because we are so fearfully creative when it comes to creating our own failures in life. Like we literally are so creative about failure. How can we, why can't we be so creative about success? You know, I know I I notice this in my life as well. I'm so creative when it comes to failing. I'm so but but you can be so creative. So you can be so innovative when it comes to your success. When it comes to getting um getting get, getting that success that you go after or which, whichever area in life that you want to put it whether it's with the whether you're seeking is a greater relationship with yourself but you have a neurological network an old demon inside of you is, is in the form of an entity is in you as the overall deity you're fighting against the trying to fi trying to figure out uh how to put that demon down or it might be an issue in health you know a lot of the health issues that people experience really just comes from a mentality first that bends in and actually becomes a physical disease even if it's something that your family has been dealing with for generations you just came to experience that because really all of you guys are just going through the same type of challenges or it could be a wisdom issue you might have like a wisdom cap that religion that you pay attention so much to might be a cap on your level of wisdom and how much you can explode forth or gain or be seen as you know, you're told like, for example, if you're a Muslim, you're told you're a, you're the Abd of a, Allah, and that's seen as and that's seen as an honorable thing. You know, you're a slave of God, and and you know, 
I don't like that necessarily because I, I, I'm not no slave to nothing. I'm a free spirit and I do things willingly and um I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not yeah, I'm not I'm not signing up for that program. We'll just we'll just put it that way. Because the universe has so many programs you can sign up for. You don't need another man's or woman's programs to worry about something. You already have the program installed inside of you, but we just choose to deactivate that program and make less of ourselves for something outside of us just be just based on you know that thing being constantly in front of our face the whole time and that that being seen as the modern reality of how reality should be should be what about and that, like andrew tate for example you're not supposed to go about talking about life that way you're not about you're not supposed to make the remorse that he's supposed to be he's making and things like that that's why they had to take him down and here and he already knew he already knew he was going to get arrested as well so it's like Anybody that even gets to that level of media of public of publicizing themselves as far as content or being able to uh, direct the attention of the world or make you pay attention to my virtue and principles and how I go about things, that person is obviously going to be considered dangerous by the world powers and uh, everybody else because because attention is what controls reality. They have to make sure that what they what you pay attention to inside of you is not of uh, you know the highest god of gods the lord of lords the king of kings and they have to make sure whatever you pay attention outside of you is going to be some low vibrational shit i mean a lot of hip-hop music is great but uh a lot of that music is extremely whack extremely uh just it, it makes you pay attention to some stuff that's like off the world because that's what jesus says be in the world but don't be of it so they're making you pay attention to some very low vibrational shit externally and they make you, and they make sure that your, the, the, your, whatever you pay attention to inside of you is some low vibrational shit internally and inside of you as well. So they don't, don't ever want you to figure out that your DNA is literally a ladder for you to bring information, quantum jump through parallel realities, grab information, and come back to this dimension because you're doing it already. You're going in and out of this reality simultaneously. You know, with your many different organs, you breathe in you breathe out simply but you do this with your mind already where you, when you set a question when you ask your brain a question based on your experiences whatever your brain will begin to gather data your brain your neurons will literally begin to talk to other neurons from a different space and time continuum and they will interact and bring information to you because you got your higher self you got your lower self your higher self just be looking at you being inside of your lower self as an observer and your higher self is like yo why 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 are you doing that why are you just chilling with the lower self the whole time this is why we actually put in so much time with our lower self with our density that we literally are, are stuck here mostly and we can we're kind of locked out of our higher self but we locked ourselves on purpose in exchange of these things of the world and things like that this is why you know you have the in the book of enoch you have the 200 fallen angels that uh fell and things like that and i strongly believe a lot of these fallen angels are still alive today uh shit you might be one of those fallen angels i might i might be one of those fallen angels who knows but a lot of these uh dispositions or angels because angels are just really walking people just like me and you and it could also and it also means basically you being able to create a different angle with your mind a mathematical angle where you know how to attack a, a situation and circumstance differently because now you understand the language of angels and you understand the language of demons and then you can actually understand how to go about life from the, from the perspective of you being Neo in the Matrix and seeing the metrics within the Matrix. And then you can see how far to push things and how far to attract things based on what the situation calls for. Because if I'm hanging out with a bunch of drug dealing Mexicans, whatever, I know there's certain things that I'm going to do to de-escalate the situation. And there's certain things that I can add to the situation as far as numerology, numerology and gematria that can assist me with get a one getting out of that, at that situation alive and b uh being able to still do something that's god-like within within a, within a situation that's seen as impossible to get out of for the average person and things like that so because again like um a lot of people don't really want to do what they do but they think that's their only way out and again that's one of the things that the matrix does very very well it makes you feel like there's no other way out other than this particular way out of the so you know you've been captured call 911 which is great whatever you can call 911 but the point is is that there's so many ways to go about this realm in reality and to actually manifest more only thought 
how to participate based on uh, how our mother and fathers live, live their lives, how our professors, how the celebrities that they put in front of us, like Elon Musk, Bill Gates. Not that the, not that these people are good or bad, but it's a it's a it's a certain way of going about get uh, a certain way about going to get life done. But there's so many ways you can go get life done. You can be a whole new emoji here on Earth, but they want you they want you to limit. They want, you, they want to limit your capacity as an electrical capacitor and they want you to play out only certain virtues and principles that are that are lower octave in nature and they only manifest chaos and you know they want to be the ones that ma that uh, manage the chaos with their institutions and things like that because I there's actually people that believe that religion saves lives okay religion sure you can say religion saves lives but is it really like you know because that's their version of order out of the chaos that was already here and the chaos that they could, that they still influence for it to continuously exist and things like that because whatever you can't control they will step into it as an as a form of an institution and try to and try to control that so even with kids and things like that with foster care and things like that this is just their form of institution logic logical way of understanding that what demonic shit that we've been doing getting lost into so that they can step into and take care of it themselves type of shit. But again, you can go about it a lot of ways. But again, they just like to sit in the back. They like to create these institutions. They like to institute their knowledge and things like that. And they want to make sure that you see the world how you how they see the world. Or how they intend for you to see the world. Because the moment you get outside of that perception, they don't want you to be creating a reality similar to what Andrew Tate was able to do. Because again, money's not real, none of it is real, but what's real in all of this experience is you, the pulse in you, because money has no pulse in it, money's not real, but the pulse in you is real. But the moment you understand how to take that pulse into a whole other level, whole other uh, vibration, that's what they're scared of, because they already know that divine spark is in you, but they don't want that divine spark being, you know, reinvigorated further into its, uh, in, into its truer aspects of itself. So if you really were to actually know yourself and you were to stick by the code of yourself, you'd actually be able to manifest all the things that you've been thinking and feeling it and thinking that, like, okay, this is impossible. Oh, no, this can't be. No, you're, all, you're already all of that. But we're too busy thinking about the limited ways of the world that, they have been, that, that have been handed to us as far as the only way that we believe we can go about, about attaining these things. And yeah, that's just a little short video for y'all, you know. Uh, yeah, for sure. Peace out.